Hi, it's Matt from Musoma here, and this is a quick introduction to content creation and editing within the Musoma app. So we start with the home page, Musoma Documents, and in the top left hand corner there's a plus button to add in a new document. You can see that that accesses the song import and composition page, and we're in the compose part of that page. So the way this works is each of the lines in this document has different purpose and the purpose is represented by the colour of the line. So for example this example song is the title because it's the light blue colour and the artist here is named band. So the way it works is you mark each of the lines with the purpose of the line and then when you come to import it we know exactly what each line means in the document. There's also the benefit of uh, when you mark lines as chord lines you can play back the actual chord sound. So for example here where I'm selecting each of the chords you can see that it plays the particular chord. Now I can also obviously edit these chords just by using the space bar and if I put in let's say a B flat, the, you can see that each of the chords sounds as you type them. So let's try an E minor, E minor. You can also access the chords through the chord palette here at the top on, on the yellow bar, on the yellow toolbar. Um, so you minimize the keyboard and you can see that you have a selection of different chord types. You can play them to hear what they sound like. Um, it's, quite, it's quite comprehensive in terms of what you can select. And there's a, also an instrument. Uh, and then so you can then add that chord. So let's add this D minor chord into the chord palette. So now we have D minor. You can play it from the chord palette. And you can also drag and drop. So it's, it's slightly tricky to get used to but you basically press the chord down lift it towards the top of the screen and you can see now we're dragging and if you drag that to any of the chord lines so let's put it between this G and this D minor here actually now let's go there there you go so you've got A minor D minor G and you can build your song like that Obviously, if you drag it and drop it onto lyrics, then that's it's not going to understand that. So cool. Um, and you build up the song with chord and lyric lines. If you've got, sometimes if you import a song, which we'll get onto in a minute, you find that the lines are very long. You really want to keep the lines quite short. And if you find that you have lines where there's chords and lyrics, and and you need to split the line. What you can do is if you go to, for example, this line here, you can use the split function there at the top, or if you tap once, you get the quick toolbar. And if you hit split on the toolbar, you can see that it nicely splits the chord and lyrics uh, consecutively in the right places. That can save a lot of kind of editing and messing around. Okay, another feature is if you import a song or if you type a song in and then you decide you want to see all the chords, refresh the chords into the chord bar, you can just press this uh, refresh button which is up there next to the plus and that way you can, it scans the document and finds all the chords. And that way you can, if you're trying to compose something, you can kind of hear how the song might go. So let's try kind of like that and so that gives you an idea without having to get your external keyboard out you know what the chord sound progression might sound like when you're when you hear the song for real that's quite useful I think okay so um, also we've got a method of importing pre-existing songs so if you're starting from scratch on an import, what you do is basically hit the uh, the garbage can there, 
and that allows you to clear the whole document down. So you've now got an empty document and what we can do is if you hit the file button that will open the iCloud drive <coughs> and you can import from text or called pro format. So we've got our demo song here, the impossible dream, so let's import that text file. And you can see it's importing, it works for a little while and it scans through the document. Okay, so now we've got the import and you can see that it's detected what it thinks is each of the, the line types there. So you've got things like the title, which that's correct. The, the band or artist is correct. Uh, the author's correct. Now this, copyright, that's correct. Publisher's correct. Sometimes it will, if it can't understand the format of the line, you know, it might detect it as something incorrect. Where So you would just go through, yeah, here's a good example, so chords used. We might just set that as a memo, right? Um, and then click two bars, that's probably a section and then intro and then these are chords so it's, it thinks these are lyrics because it's got some brackets there uh, so we just mark them as chords <coughs> and then this is no vocal so that might be a section um, and then this is <coughs> section chords lyrics this looks correct uh, yeah it's all good verse lyrics that's all good so far it's got all that correct. Okay, everything looks. Oh, hang on. Instrument ad lib. That should be a section. Ah, uh, yeah. Solo, blah, blah, blah. Instrument outro. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so all that looks good now and is ready to import. So let's minimize the keyboard. Let's refresh the chord palette as well. So that gives you. So there you go, you can see all the chords that are used in, in the song. And audition them, see if there's any that are wrong. If you're happy with that, then the next step is to hit the import. So we hit the import on the top right hand side there. And this gives you the document details screen. And this contains your title, this is all the things that it's detected the title, the artist, um, and then we've got uh, options for the guide track, which is the main track that contains the audio. So let's select in from the cloud. So that will we'll use this uh, this MP3 here, and that will be our guide track. And the artwork is also from the cloud so let's just grab these fireworks that looks good uh, it's now 2017 so let's change that publisher key tempo time signature and this don't show on main page bracket sets only that's if you've got a set of songs and when you load the app you don't want to show them all on the main page you only want them to be part of a set of songs so that way it gets rid of the clutter on the main page uh, in this case it's just an individual song it's not part of an album or a set so we'll just uh, go with that create and now you can see we've got our song and you can see on the player page it's detected the chords everything looks good and if we hit play it should be associated with our guide track so you can hear that and that's all good but no synchronization as yet so what we need to do is move on to synchronization so from the player page if you take your song and hit edit on the top right hand corner there you're now into the edit page, the timing editor, and this allows you to synchronize your song 
the guide track of your song with the timing of the chords and lyrics. So what we do is on the bottom part of the toolbar, on the bottom part of the page there's a toolbar and you can see it's got um, rewind play and then there's this half play and the half play allows you to play back the song at half speed and I would recommend using that so that you can get your timing correct. If I now put it in record mode, if I by hitting record, when I play, as I scroll the actual lyrics and chords, we will be recording those movements. So we're on zero zero zero, press half speed and then you scroll to where the position is and press click on the actual mark. you can see it takes a bit of practice to get that right and if we then just press stop again scroll back to the top let's see what it looks like so press play this time we're not recording and you can see now going back full speed. the impossible dream the impossible dream the impossible dream not too bad got to So obviously it takes a bit of practice and you might want to scroll slightly earlier than, than I did in that demo. Okay cool, so now that we've got our lyrics synchronised and we've got our lyrics in, uh, if you've got a multi-track, a multi-channel mix, then you can go into the player and hit the mix button. And you can see right now we've just got our one guide audio track there. And what we're going to need to do is import the other audio. So if you open the folder, the, that's the first icon on the right hand side of the top toolbar, you're opening the audio import dialog there. Now in this you have, uh, you can either paste from audio share which is a handy utility um, or you can cloud import. So we're going to just cloud import this uh, file. And the way, you, the best way to do it, you can do it by individual track, but we're going to do this one in bulk. So we're going to cloud import zip for all audio. Now that again, that opens up iCloud Drive. Go into the Impossible Dream folder, and you can see in there there's a we pre-made the zip with all the audio in. So if you select the zip then you will depending if the you know if the how fast your internet connection is and if the file is downloaded locally you'll get this assign audio files and you got a, a selection of assign audio files to a new track assign audio files individually now what individually will request the title that you want to import for each of the files um, it will cycle through and then just let you set up them individually or you can just say assign to, new to a new track so we'll do that 
uh, told that it's imported and then give it a second and now you can see we've got all our audio tracks imported and we've kept the guide audio and we've got now got our extra 11 tracks now one of these is our is basically the mix down that's this one here so this was our original guide track so we don't actually need this track at all so what we can do is if we go to tracks that's the button on the toolbar our top right hand side tracks uh, we've already got our guide audio so we don't need this one here this external switch main out so let's just go back to that hit edit and then we're allowed to delete that remove that track so and in this case we can also rename things um, you can you can set individual parameters for each of the tracks for example the uh, preferred multi-channel track here all this all the stuff to do with multi-channel whether it, whether you want to down mix it to mono and equally if you want to record you can set the record preferences as well so each of the track parameters can be set for each track from this editor you go back to the mixer there so now you can see we've got each of the individual tracks and the guide track the red on track one here that's whether it's record enabled or not so let's just disable the record so we don't want to record over the guide audio and let's move the guide audio down to so it's playing at uh, no level and if I hit play you should hear the actual this is now the multi-channel mix <laughs> Okay, that's another feature. So if you, on the faders and the mixer, if you double tap, you can actually access the track settings menu for each of the individual tracks. And from there you can access things like, if you want to control this mixer from MIDI, you can learn your MIDI for the, for the fader. You can do things like sharing the individual audio files or clearing the audio files and importing, re-importing from different apps and the clipboard, that kind of stuff. So all the individual um, track functions are accessed by double tapping. You just double tap. And hopefully, you know, when you're when you're editing the, the mix, you won't double tap too often uh, by mistake. <laughs> That's why it's not a single tap. You have to double tap. So that's cool, that's a basic overview of the mixer there. And also I'd just like to say in the tracks, if you go back to the tracks editor, so tracks on the right hand, top right hand side there, we can also do things like reordering these tracks. So if I hit edit and I decide that I want, for example, the, not very clear, I should really rename these, um, you know, so that you can see the, individual instruments better so let's rename that to click um, and then that way we can see it better so yeah if you want the click for example as the first track in the list you can just reorder them with this editor um, yeah and I suggest giving these tracks sensible names rather than have them start with over one so there you go, you can see now, for example, these are the drums and the click. We'll go back to the mixer. 
So you can see down the bottom there you've got your guide audio, uh, you've got your click, your drums left right and so for so on and so forth you would rename these to be sensible names and reorder them to be where you want them in the actual position of the mixer. You can also obviously uh, reorder the channel output and input. So if we go back to that click again you'll see that that's the preferred channel, preferred multi-track channel there is 14. So if I, if you want you click on, tra uh, if you always use say channel 1 for the click and you would just set your preferred multi-track channel to 1 and that way if you're on multi-channel hardware the click will then come out on channel 1 and you can see now we've, we've changed it. The 14 refers to the input channel so if you're set to record this channel it will route from channel 14 and that will be your input. So if, we, if you want 1 and 1 for example let's go back and we've got the output channel as 1 but let's also make our recording channel 1. So now we'll, if we recorded we would be taking the signal and you can see there in the brackets that's now changed in, in that track 4 it's, it's now changed to take the signal from the recording signal from channel 1 input and we're going out on channel 1 as well so now your click is sourced from channel 1 and it outputs on channel 1 it's kind of irrelevant if you're just doing a stereo mix but these this uh, this mixer is also multi-channel so it's worth setting these up as if they're routed out to multi-channel hardware. So thanks very much for watching and I hope that helps to show how to use the app and how to produce your content.